welcome back to another episode. Now winter has really settled in around here and my days now start with lighting and maintaining a fire for my garage heater. Overall things have slowed down a bit but I still got something done. Now in the last episode I built this table from scrap wood and this time I'm gonna build the first seat for it. I started with a piece of quarter inch plywood that I cut into its shape with the help of a T-bevel which makes it easy to copy all the funky angles of the hull and a cordless jigsaw to make the actual cuts. A small Stanley trimming plane helps to clean up the edges. Now the piece on its own is not rigid enough so I glued those strips along the edge to stiffen it up. This panel will be my starting point and as usual I haven't made any plans so I will have to figure the rest out along the way. But it shouldn't be too hard since this is really just a seat after all. Now to install the panel I used screws and peel construction adhesive. Now this glue will fill the tiny gaps that I have better than normal wood glue. With this as a base in place I started to go through my scrap pile and cut all the framing pieces one by one until I had the shape of my seat built. Of course I had to make my life very difficult again and round over this corner here. The plan was to cover the edge with a strip of 2 inch wide and quarter inch thick wood, but the radius of the corner is way too small to just bend a piece in place, so I solved this by cutting actually 3 pieces that are only 3 30 seconds of an inch thick, and then I placed them on a baking sheet full of water, with a weight on top of it to make sure it stays submerged. I set the temperature at 250 degrees Fahrenheit and a timer for 2 hours. The combination of heat and moisture definitely did the trick here. Those sheets are very flexible and pliable now and before they cooled down I clamped them on this jig. I let this dry overnight before I removed the clamps and even though it did take on the shape of the curve there was still a little bit of spring back which is not that big of a deal since the glue up will take care of that. Now I could cut the piece to size on a table saw and install it with the rest of the panels. Alright, now this part was done. Next I had to work on the upholstery and that is where I entered new territory because I never have done this before. So I watched a couple YouTube videos and I learned a lot. One of the things that I learned is that you can't just use any kind of foam. My original idea was to use a 2 inch memory foam mattress that I had kicking around in the basement. But it turns out memory foam is not the best choice for this. It just doesn't offer enough support and it takes a really long time to come back to its original height once you have been sitting on it. So long story short, I went and bought some foam that is meant for upholstery. My plan was to glue quarter inch plywood to the foam with 3M multi-purpose spray adhesive. I wasn't sure if this would react with the foam, so I did glue a little test piece in the corner first. I let this sit for a couple hours and it worked out perfectly. Now I felt comfortable enough to do this with a bigger piece. 
The plywood though was not very flat, which you can see by the curved edge here. So I added a frame to one side off camera to keep it as flat as possible. And since this will be the seat, it will also keep it stable when you sit on it. Otherwise with just a quarter inch thickness, the plywood on its own would not be strong enough to support at least my weight. I figured a serrated bread knife would work to cut the foam. I tried it on my little test piece first and I thought this is as good as it will get and I went ahead and cut the big piece as well. The knife did a decent job, however it left a little bit of a rough surface, so I took my cordless angle grinder with a 40 grit flap disc and I started to work the surface. You have to be very careful when you do this, just a little bit too much pressure and the disc will grab the foam and rip a big chunk out of it. Alright, now it's time for the fabric. Since I'm on a budget here and the purchase of the foam swallowed a good chunk of that, I decided to go with cotton in the form of a canvas drop cloth. Now you can find this stuff in any hardware store. It's meant to protect surfaces from paint and other debris. But I really like the rustic texture and color of it. And best of all, it's fairly cheap. Now, before I get started, I will have to wash this. And it's 100% cotton, so it will shrink. But I made sure that I had plenty of excess when I bought it. I never thought I would film myself on an ironing board, but here we are. To be honest, I never ironed anything in my life, so it took a while to learn that it is done best on cotton with steam and a high temperature. Another thing that I learned by watching YouTube videos is that it is recommended to use a layer of extra loft bedding. Now this will soften the sharp edges of the foam and will create a more professional look overall. Next I simply used a stapler with 516T50 staples to staple the fabric on the base. I worked my way along all sides while maintaining a decent amount of tension. I did leave out the corners for the very end and to finish them I overlapped the fabric again with some tension on it. Now this way you don't have to sew anything but you are left with a visible fold, that is the downside of it. For me personally that's totally fine, it doesn't bother me at all and I just really like the simplicity of it. Once I cut back the excess material, I had this really ugly line of staples left and I decided to use a black 1 inch nylon strip to cover it up. The hot glue gun did a great job to bond everything together and I was left with a much cleaner look. I pretty much repeated the whole process with the backrest, with the only difference that I skipped the frame on this one. Since I'm not sitting on it, it doesn't need to be that strong. And here's how the seat looks like when assembled. I am pretty happy about how this turned out and I can tell you it's surprisingly comfortable. I have tons of storage under the seat, I kept that one super simple and just lift up the seat cushion for access. Now once again I'm one step closer to the final goal. I guess it's time to wrap this up, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will catch you on the next one.